In this video, we're going to be exploring the unit circle and radians. Let's start by talking about radians. What exactly are radians? Now, you might be familiar with degrees, which is what we typically use to measure angles. Radians is just another way to measure angles, and this way is commonly used in trigonometry, calculus, and many other mathematical subjects. To understand what exactly um, we define as one radian, let's start by drawing a circle. So if this is our circle and this is our center, we can make a radius and we can give it a length of r. Now, this length r can be of any value, any number. And suppose we have an arc over here, and this arc has the same length as a radius. So both the arc and the radius have a length of r. The angle that is formed between these lengths over here is what we define as one radian. Now let's ask ourselves, how many radians can um, be formed in one full rotation? Now, if we're talking about degrees, we, we know that 360 degrees um, is in one full rotation. But how many radians is in one full rotation? To answer this, we can use the circumference of a circle. We know that the circumference of a circle is 2 pi r. So how many r's can fit in 2 pi r? Well, that's simple. 2 pi r divided by r is equal to 2 pi. So we know that 2 pi of r's can fit in a circumference. So that answers our question. Uh, there has to be 2 pi radians in one full rotation. So 2 pi radians is equal to one full rotation, which is equal to 360 degrees. So pi radians is equal to 180 degrees. Let's take a look at the unit circle, which is a circle with a radius of 1. We can think of the unit circle as a grid. So by this, I mean that this over here can be the y-axis. This can be the x-axis. This can be the origin. And since it has a radius of 1, the circle has a radius of 1, this point over here can be labeled as 1, 0 radius of 1, but this is in the negative x direction. So this point can be labeled as negative 1, 0. So this would be 0, 1, and this would be 0, negative 1. So now let's take a look at how we can draw angles using the unit circle. So if I just made a line like this, we can see that no angle has been formed. Like no angle like this or like this has been formed yet. It's just zero degrees. So we can label this as zero degrees. This would be 90 degrees. This would be 180 degrees. This would be 270 degrees. In a full rotation, would be 360 degrees. Now, if you remember how to convert from degrees to radians, uh, we can take a look over here. We can redraw the unit circle in radians instead of degrees. So we know that 180 degrees is equal to pi. So let's rewrite this. This is pi radians instead of 180 degrees. Half of that is pi over 2 radians, which is equal to 90 degrees. This is, of course, 0 radians or 0 degrees. This is 3 pi over 2 radians, or 270 degrees. And if we make a full rotation, this is 2 pi radians, or 360 degrees. Suppose we're given an angle that looks something like this. How do we find sine, cosine, or tangent of that angle? Well, using the unit circle, we would just create a right triangle like this. And then using the length of the sides and our knowledge of Sokotoa, we would evaluate that function. 
but we can't really make a right triangle with values such as 0, pi over 2, pi, 3 pi over 2, and 2 pi, because those would just be straight lines. You can't make a right triangle and use that method. So how do we find sine, cosine, and tangent for those points? So let's try using a different method. Suppose we have an angle theta and we create a right triangle and we call this point over here the point that intersects the unit circle we call that x y we give the points x y the length of the hypotenuse would just be one since just that's just the radius this side would be of length y and this side would be of length x If we were to do cosine of theta, cosine is adjacent over hypotenuse. So that is x over 1, which just gives us x. Sine of theta is opposite over hypotenuse which is y over 1, which is y. So what we're saying is basically cosine of any angle is just the x-coordinate where the line segment formed by that angle, like this, intersects the unit circle. And sine of any angle is where the line that intersects the unit circle, the y-coordinate of that point, is sine of that angle. So what I mean is that we can just use some method for these values. Using the method, we can just say that cosine of 0 is 1, since that's the x-coordinate that's formed by the line segment that intersects the unit circle. Sine of 0 is just a y-coordinate, so that's 0. For pi over 2, cosine is the x-coordinate where the line segment intersects the unit circle. So cosine of pi over 2 is 0, and sine of pi over 2 is 1. For pi, cosine of pi is negative 1, and sine of pi is 0. And for 3 pi over 2, cosine of 3 pi over 2 is 0, and sine of 3 pi over 2 is negative 1. Now that we know how to evaluate trig functions for these values, let's learn how to do that for the values in, in between. So for example, what is sine of pi over 3? So first of all, we need to know how to mark pi over 3 on the unit circle. So we can think about it in different ways. One way of just approaching it is if this entire section over here is pi, we have to divide that into three approximately equal parts. And this is a third pi. So this can be marked as pi over three. Or we can just say that pi over three is a little less than pi over two. Now the second step is to convert that radians value into degrees. So what is pi over three equal to in degrees? So we know that pi radians is equal to 180 degrees. So pi over 3 radians has to equal to 180 divided by 3 degrees. And 180 divided by 3 is equal to 60 degrees. So we can create a right triangle with that. So this is our right angle. This would be 60 degrees. And we know that the sum has to equal to 180 so this has to be 30 degrees. So now we have a 30, 60, 90 uh, triangle. And we know that, that, that those type of triangles have special properties. So let's redraw that triangle over here. We know that whatever is opposite to the 30 degree angle has to be 1. Whatever is opposite to the 60 degree angle has to be root 3. And whatever is opposite to the 90 degree angle has to be 2. 
So we asked what is sign of pi over 3. So let's write Sogatoa over here. So sign means that it has to be opposite over hypotenuse. So opposite over hypotenuse is root 3 over 2. And that gives us our answer. Let's look at another example. What is cosine of 5 pi over 6? So first let's label 5 pi over 6 on the unit circle. We know that 5 pi over 6 has to be a little less than pi, so we can mark that as somewhere around here. So this point over here is 5 pi over 6, and we have to convert that to degrees. So pi radians is equal to 180 degrees. So what is 5 sixths of 180? That is equal to 150, which means that 5 sixths of pi is equal to 150 degrees. And if this is 180 degrees over here, then this angle over here has to be 30 degrees. So we can form another right triangle like that. This would be just 90 degrees, and this would be 60 degrees. So let's redraw that triangle over here. It's 30, 90, and 60. So this is another 30, 60, 90 triangle. So like we said previously, opposite of 30 degrees is 1, opposite of 60 degrees is root 3, and we have to add a negative sign. Don't forget the negative sign, because since this is in the negative x direction, remember this is our origin, and anything over, going over here is in the negative x direction. This has to be negative root 3, and opposite of 90 degrees is always 2. So we asked what is cosine of 5 pi over 6. So using so katoa, cosine is adjacent over hypotenuse. So adjacent to the 30 degree angle over hypotenuse. So we get that it's negative root 3 over 2. What is the tangent of 5 pi over 4? So first we have to start off with marking 5 pi over 4 on the unit circle. So an easy way to do this is since this line over here establishes pi over 2, half of that would give us pi over 4. And this would have to be 3 pi over 4 since this is 2 pi over 4, which is pi over 2. And this is just 4 pi over 4 which means that this line has to be 5 pi over 4. So now that we have this line marked, let's create a right triangle. So what angle would this angle be? Well, if pi is 180 degrees, and 5 pi over 4, if we convert into degrees, that would be 225 degrees because 5, five over 4 times 180 is 225. So the difference between 225 and 180 is 45 degrees. So this angle must be 45 degrees. Since this is 90 degrees, this is 45 degrees. This has to be 45 degrees as well, as that adds up to 180 degrees. So that gives us a 45, 45, 90 triangle. And if we redraw this, we know that a 45, 45, 90 triangle has special properties. So whatever is opposite of the 45 degree angle um, has to be 1.
and whatever is opposite of the 90 degree angle has to be root 2. And we have to remember to give these two uh, values over here a negative sign because they're in the negative x direction, as you can see here, and negative y direction. So essentially, this is like um, quadrant 3 in a grid. So now that we have that tangent, according to Soka Toa, is opposite over adjacent. So opposite of this 45 degree angle over here is negative one, and adjacent of this 45 degree angle over here is also negative one. So negative one over negative one gives us one.